Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Police declare Britain a Nigerian wanted for attempting to overthrow Tinubu. The Nigerian police force declared British national Andrew Wine and Nigerian Lucky Obiang wanted for allegedly plotting to overthrow the government and creating sleeper cells to destabilize the country. Wine is accused of financing and guiding operations to instigate violent protests and unlawful activities aimed at causing chaos and justifying an unconstitutional regime change. But Wine and Obiang have fled Nigeria and the police have initiated a global search to apprehend them. I know that, um, this is obviously coming from the end bad governance protest where obviously people had to go into the streets um, carrying placards and having to demonstrate the fact that they do not have enough in Nigeria, the hardship, the inflation, so many things are happening in Nigeria, even insecurity as well. Um, but yeah, now the police are saying that some people decided to, um, you know, instigate crime. They called it mutiny as well. Um, there's, there's just a lot. They're we'll, calling we'll, treason. Treason. Uh, yes. For Nigerians who wanted to overthrow, uh, overthrow the government. Can you overthrow a, a, a democratic government? I, I know that really happens in military. Like a military government, you have a coup and all of that. So I, does that really happen? Uh, well, the, ultimately, the people are the ones that have the power. They can do and undo, as it were. Mm -hmm. Only that when you're going into office, you go peacefully because people vote you in. But when you're coming out, people have to... It happened in, uh, was it Venezuela? One of these countries where a female president ran away uh, because yes, of yes, that, yes, you know, yes. it's the people that revolted. Mm. Uh, you go to Haiti, for instance, there are rebels that are taking over. These are not necessarily military and all but that. I but I don't even think that was the reason why people came out. My, pro my problem is, even before the end bad governance protest, anything you say about this government, Opposition. they say you want to overthrow Tinubu. Mm. Not just the government, specifically the president. They want, mm. You want to overthrow the president. And I don't, I wonder why. Uh, they keep saying that, and I wonder how we are going to move forward if every criticism you, you find mm. on the street is because they want to overthrow the government. Could that be something that is being projected? Like, maybe you feel, you know how you feel you're not doing enough, or you're not doing the right thing, and so whenever something happens, you're already scared. It, it comes... They're always <laughs> uncomfortable. Or an yeah. old woman is always it uncomfortable. It comes from a place of, when, of insecurity. You're mm. insecure <clears throat> about your position. I think so as well. It's, 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 it's insecurity, because if you're doing well, People will, the testimonies will be there. People right. will be we'll talking you. for you and all that. Till date, we remember Yara Dua, mm -hmm. of blessed memory. And that his would, mom just he, passed. He, uh, he, yes, at eight, 102. 102 right. mm. And people, in fact, on social media, people were saying, oh, thank you, Ma, for, you know, giving birth to one of the best presidents yes. we've ever had. Yes. Imagine such comments as of 2024. And Yaradwad passed away how a many A long time ago? ago. A long time so, ago. At yeah. least more than 10 years. And then we're still talking, we're still about, talking him. about him. So it is possible in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It's not like Nigerians are all bad and all that. Why would you be talking about overthrow for everything that you hear on the streets? Mm -hmm. It means that this government is not ready to uh, listen. Mm -hmm. And you can't keep throwing it at people and saying in the next few months we are going to we are going to find a good lease of life because of the policies that we are doing or we are brought to 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 Nigerians. It's some policies are forgive the word but rubbish. Mm. You're just bringing it and springing it on people. Right now and we and know. And I, and I think the timing also is it's just not the right timing. You cannot bring this and multiple others at the same time. Like what do you want from me really? You, there's removal of fuel subsidy, I there's mean, electricity tariff, there's inflation. There is so much that Nigerians have to go through. Now we know that oil, oil subsidy, fuel subsidy removal was a foolish decision. Mm. And you know, because I don't know the other word to use, but mm. it was very, very. It wasn't uh, just the best. Decision it was not at called the time. for. Mm. It was not. It was not planned. It was mm. not nothing. Nothing. There was about not. It. There was nothing. There was nothing to cushion the effect even before it happened. You because know how you plan. I expected. You are proactive. Before the the, the 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 budget for the next year was done by the previous administration, mm -hmm. this is the same party. They know what it was, and whether you whether you like it or not. Uh, uh, Tinubu was instrumental to Buhari being what he 
he became. Yeah. So he had a hand in that government. So he knew everything about it, or he was supposed to know. Because if he doesn't know, or he didn't know, that is an indictment on himself that mm. he was not prying. He, he wasn't was, even prepared. He was coming to, to take the number one position, and he wasn't prepared. So if you knew about it, why didn't you find out what you're going to, to do if you remove fuel subsidy? Mm. Every candidate was talking about removing fuel subsidy. But now we know that some of them were just following the bandwagon because mm. they had no plan. No. There is no plan A, no plan B, no plan C. Mm. It's just, let's remove it. Just like someone who is just ready to take power, but is not ready to govern because mm. he didn't prepare for that. He was preparing for That's election. That's just inordinate ambition. And it shouldn't be about your ambition. It should be about the fact that you are prepared. You know what you want to do. You have a plan in motion that you're going to execute. Because how do you come and spring up all of these things and you don't even know how Nigerians are going to fare? That's the reason why people had to go into now the streets. Now we're paying subsidy and then we don't have fuel, which means that... Uh, uh, there's something really, really fishy. Yes. Because that same subsidy that, that was removed, that was supposed to give us more money and make life easier for us, has been removed and we're still paying it and then we're not seeing any difference. So there's really something fishy. There's no dividends of democracy right now, if you ask me. I, I don't, I, I, I'm not sure I can, I can yeah, say this. Yeah, because we don't have a say. They just yeah. decide, tell us what to do. And, and spring then, it up on us and that's it. And like, then final say. Be buying wood. Good cars and good jets and good everything. And then you just speak about it, or you're trying to overthrow the government. But it doesn't really work that way. And I mean, for me, I definitely want people to, um, you know, to investigate. Mm -hmm. I, you, you know, if, if this truly happened, let's investigate. And I think we have um, Omashola Deji with us right now. Hi, Omashola. Good morning. We have like three minutes, Omashola, but we are glad. Yeah, that good we're morning. Able to Thank you. Mm. Yeah. So we're just talking about the fact that, um, you know, uh, one person, uh, if the, the British guy has been declared wanted, another Nigerian, and it, it's talking about overthrowing the president's government. So now, we don't know what that is, really. If, do you think that what they wanted to do is to overthrow the government, or maybe they're just concerned about what's going on in Nigeria right now? Well, I think um, the people that have said and protest largely are concerned about what is going on in the country because if you look at it life is more unbearable than it has ever been for nigeria yeah. because if you are buying a bread for 500 now before now you are buying it for one thing and your salary still remains the same and the cost of electricity is high the cost of production for the companies is also high what do you expect there will be this organic discontentment which will bring about protest so but the problem is Government has failed to agree that there is discontentment in the land. Well, if in the wisdom of government that people are trying to take over the government, then I think that itself is an indictment on the government itself. Because for those people to come under the umbrella of protest, when they see you this notice and been given that we are going to hold a protest, so you ask yourself that if a notice has been given, what is the reason for that notice that was given to the government? The reason is for government to be able to provide security and put it out in order just so that the protest can go on smoothly for people to hear their views. But people give you notice and you are coming out as a government to say that there are some people that are high on that. It is an indictment on you as a government, knowing fully well that in this case there are organic misfeelings for the people. So for me, I think that government is thing like other protective government which is always about power and protection because government has focused more on clamping down on the people on protecting his own interests on perpetuating himself in office than doing the actual work of the government which is protecting life and life and property and providing support for the people so who some government that if for instance government said that they have identified the sources of the protest. And at the end of the day, you are still saying that people want to use it to change over government. If you know, before the protest that people want to use it to change over government, why not arrest such people before the protest? So we have a situation whereby government, as it has always been, is reactive rather than proactive. And at the end of the day, I see it as a way of suppressing dissenting voices. Because if you look at it, um, journalists are now being slammed down 
If journalists are both slammed down on, and people are facing action, and you want to stop them from protesting, it shows the features of the government, which is to make life convenient for itself, and at the end of the day, not showing much care, much concern about the citizens. So, government should address the main issues and focus on the people that it thinks that want to perpetuate uh, that want to remove the government from office. That energy that was used, the deployment of state resources that was used to summon other chief religious leaders to actual up, the money that was targeted for them, that money can be used to provide support for the people. So if the government knows that it is about within change, why don't they go and give the money to those people that want to change the regime? Why are they summoning people that the think are of influence to stop the protest? So when you spend money to stop the protest, it means that you know that they are genuine protesters. So what have you done as a government to address the needs of these protesters? These people are not to protest. These are some people not to protest about. So I think it's more time to stop the October, the October 1 coming protest. Because if you look at it, the two when the protest ends, and now, not to become more very for the citizens. The first protest, there was work. Now, there's no work. I'm waiting for to buy, but I feel except I want to go and use my productive power to do a civil station. And I didn't have that time. Uh, from which they go, they did not have any work at 568, 600 naira. No, the is planning. This is the work of the Ministry of Petroleum is anything to go back to the to buy thousand. So, if you are clamoring, you are not doing much to address the interest. You are building 21 billion houses, you are buying luxury airports. Not even a debt, airports. For that matter, you know, and then you are telling people not to hear their views, you are telling people not to protest. No. The thing is, right. people will protest because there is a way on that. We bring that to a on you. People that said an anti man is an anti man. They are working, you know, in their own right for them to have said, so government should go after whoever thinks that want to put him from office. But at the same time, don't make people who are suffering legitimate who are um, clamoring legitimacy, yeah. don't make them suffer. And I'm All concerned right. that if government is using this as a weapon, why would the government be asking to kill you? What is the government asking to detain perpetually because it's a type of prison, if a type of prison. The consequence is death or if the judge decides that is business. So All right, so much I want to make you know I that think... the stupid person, when you are All all right. the fundamental human rights, I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of. I'm sure a lot of people share this same this same sentiment, and I think that's something we even say. If it's treason, we know it's treason, but it cannot be the fact that people are going into the streets, um, protesting because of what's happening in the land, and then you now try to say it's treason and you have to arrest them. And most of, of most of these people, some of them do not even have legal representation, which is quite sad and unfortunate. But this is where we have to wrap it up here. This is how much we can take right now. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, sir. Thanks for coming. Uh, thanks yeah. for having me. Sorry for coming. It's all okay. Right. It's all right. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. All right, so we're sticking with Omashala Deji, the public affairs analyst. And we've just been talking about the fact that um, a, a Britain has been declared wanted and a Nigerian as well for trying to overthrow Tinubu's government. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so much for watching The Breakfast with us. My name is Rome Paulson. And I am Yangu Agadi. Have a wonderful day. Have an amazing day. Who has these mugs? So they have new mugs. Should, should I? Uh, I don't know where I should exchange it. Now I want to feed it. Join an element.